Oh, yeah, that's my screen. Okay, yeah, great. Hello. Oh, nice. All right, cool. Um, hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jeanette Siddiqui, and I'll be moderating this session. Uh, it's Fire Rest API with uh, Abel Entoven from uh, Furore. And that's it. Go on. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's who I am. I'm Abel Entov. I work for Furore. I have done some uh, Fire uh, Server installations and also uh, uh, yeah, used, used Fiery Server as a uh, facade and also programmed on uh, Fiery Server myself uh, in, uh, in the past and also done some stuff with Happy as well. So it's like a, a mixed bag. Um, just going to go on. Um, so the Fire RESTful API, it's um, it's obviously a RESTful API. Maybe uh, many of you are already familiar with that, those kinds of uh, APIs. So normally a Fire server is comprised of a uh, a part where the data is stored, which is the database, and there's also a part where the data is being ingested or uh, or taken out, and that is the API. So you could like compare this to uh, OData, GraphQL, or ORDS. I'm just gonna. I, I hear myself talking from this side. So I'm just going to lower that volume. Great. Um, uh, so the fire resources are used as sort of a data model. They're really used as a data transfer object uh, in the fire RESTful uh, interface. Uh, and for a RESTful interface, you need an endpoint, a web endpoint. And as you can see on the right, there's uh, different test endpoints that you can use. So you can also, you, you have this presentation as well. So you can also try those out. Those are uh, the Firely server and also a uh, happy server uh, test endpoints that you can use to, uh, to develop your own software. So I've also uh, written that down here. Um, so the endpoint patient and uh, get patient. So if you see slash patient in the presentation, it means endpoint slash patient, so that you, so that you know that. Uh, keep hearing myself from this side. I don't know if that's. Is your laptop? It is muted, but. It, yes, it... Mute, mute your laptop. Yeah. And can you do the screen share? Screen sharing. I'm already screen sharing, right? Zoom. Zoom. Oh, in Zoom. Zoom. Oh, here, yeah. And then, yeah, this one's fine. Is that better? Yeah. I still hear myself. I think so too, but it I already shut it off. Oh, okay, it's still doing it, but I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and now I'm presenting this. Uh, on the uh, top right, and you should be able to hide photo panel and hide. Um, yes, so hide the uh, video panel as well. Can someone help me? I think you click uh, escape and then this. And then this. Okay. Ah, fine. <laughs> okay, let's uh, continue. So those are the endpoints, uh, test endpoints. I'm just going to continue because we have to uh, talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, putting uh, resources into the server. So doing creates, doing updates, uh, doing deletes. We're also going to talk about uh, transactions, uh, some validation, but it's very, very basic because I know there's going to be more presentations about validation. I'm just going to uh, point you to them. Uh, and concurrency, uh, which is also probably interesting for a lot of people. 
And obviously there's the other way around. So taking uh, getting resources out of the server uh, and uh, doing, doing a search on different parameters and uh, in different ways. Okay, so to create a race resource, you use the standard uh, rests method post. And uh, normally a resource ID is like, I guess. All right. Okay. Uh, so the resource ID is assigned by the server always. And um, if you post uh, something, then you get something back. And the resource ID is then available in the header. I'm just going to show that to you. So I'm going to post to the Firely test server here. Uh, I'm going to post the patient. And I'm going to use fire JSON. That's one of the headers, header values. And this obviously is a, a guy who is very well known. And I'm going to post him to Firely server. Let's see what happens if I. Oh, fuck. Okay. Hopefully this will work. Yeah. Uh, so I get a reaction back from the server, which is uh, 201 created. Um, that means obviously a resource is created. You can see here on the right side, there is a location uh, header and it contains the whole uh, URL of the resource that is created. And it contains the patient obviously, and the ID here, which is a, a GUID that Firely server assigns. And also there is a historic versioning. I'm gonna talk about that later. So this is the normal ID, and then you have some versioning uh, at the end of the string. Um, what you also, what you can also see is that Filey Server does not really respect me because I asked it to make uh, a patient with uh, ID JT, and it didn't do that. It made a resource with a GUID uh, ID, and that's because uh, a post or a create is, is just meant to to assign a new ID. And to be honest, I don't know why it doesn't uh, give me uh, like uh, a problem with this, uh, with the, the fact that I, I use JT as an ID. So I'm going to continue to a different way to do this. So you can also upsert a resource, which just means that uh, you can either create one or update one um, using the put method, which is also a standard HTTP. So if the resource uh, exists, it's completely replaced. So you replace the whole resource with a new one. And if it doesn't exist, you can create it using your own ID. So in this case, you can provide your own ID. Um, and the last one is, a, is an additional server uh, capability. You will see that uh, many times in my presentation because some of like servers are different, obviously, and some servers have implemented this, some servers have implemented that. So this is one of the capabilities that's not implemented in all servers, but I think in most. I'm just going to show you how to do that. So here you have the same resource with uh, the ID AF, the very well-known uh, singer here. Uh, and I'm just going to post it, but I'm going to post it not to patient, oh, sorry, to put it, but not to patient, but to patient AF. So I have to use the new ID also in the URL. Going to do that. And you, as you see, you can see that here we are, I have the new ID AF. Uh, and it's like the way I want. So to be honest, I mostly use put in my uh, projects because you can decide on your own uh, ID. And most of the time, if you have an ID from, for example, the organization that you work for and you post your resources, that's the same ID. So that's that's really easy. Otherwise, you'll have to uh, store the, the connection between the two somewhere. And I'm also going to post an observation on the same patient. So uh, this is the patient AF that I just created. That's used here as a reference. And I'm going to uh, post an observation, which is uh, normally like a blood pressure or something or, uh, or anything else. And I'm going to post it using the reference so that it, it becomes connected to the patient that I just posted. Okay, so what you can see now is here that the reference that I just posted was, was here patient AF. So it was like a, um, a relative reference. And now the server has decided, okay, this is not a relative reference anymore because I know this patient. It's somewhere in my database uh, and it's available on this endpoint uh, using the, the server base as the base for the, for the URL as well. And what you can also see, but what you've probably seen earlier is that 
there's a version ID here in the in the metadata. And that's the first version ID that the resource got. So I'm just gonna skip that now for now, but we're gonna look at that later. So there's there's a third option to uh, to update a resource, and that's the uh, patch. And I'm not really going to go into that right now because it's really complicated, uh, and you can also read on it on the on the fire uh, fire website. Uh, to be very short about it, uh, it's something that I never use either because uh, because of the fact that if you do a patch, you will only replace a very specific part of your resource and not the rest. Uh, which means that you have to be very, very careful about uh, about um, yeah keeping those two uh, synchronized. So um, yeah, you can you you may be able to do a patch if you do it very fast, but if you don't, then you risk the yeah you risk that you're losing it. And, and we're going to talk about that uh, later as well because it has to do with uh, yeah your resource um, uh, being. Um, uh, be, yeah, being safe in, in your database. So the reason that I would do it is if you have really low bandwidth. So for example, if you're developing for a web application, well, that's even today, it's not, not really a, a thing anymore. Or if you'd only have partial, uh, partial resource access. So if you have only access to certain parts of the resource. Not all servers currently implement patch, but most do, I think, already. To the leader resource is uh, really easy. Um, yeah, so there's a few things that you need to remember that the delete on an on an existing resource or a delete on a, on a resource that's already missing gives you the same result. So the server won't tell you whether or not it existed already. Uh, the only thing, the only way you could see that is in the if if you want the resource data returned. But we'll talk about that later. So the data that you get returned. Uh, can be different uh, depending on how how you do the call. Um, and you have to realize that previous versions of a resource could exist. So we were talking about versions before. You could have several versions of the same resource in your database. If you do a delete, it will only delete the last version of the resource. So you will have to remember that if you're doing stuff for uh yeah that that for for help healthcare in general really because uh there are all rule kind of rules about forgetting and uh, the the right to be forgotten and stuff like that uh so i'm just going to put a new patient because uh, then i can delete it i don't have it yet so i'm going to put it hopefully this works yeah so it's been created and now i can delete it So that's it. Actually, it gives me no content. That's the default for Filey Server. So it gives me no content of the resource because normally you won't need that content anymore because you'd want to delete it. Uh, and there's also a possibility to send a batch of requests uh, that, that could be really handy in server-to-server -server communications uh, or if you want to do a transaction, which is usually atomic, atomic. Um, so uh, a bundle uh, that you you send a fire bundle if you do that. You, so you send a transaction and the transaction is composed of a fire bundle and the bundle, uh, it contains requests. Um, and the requests that are in the bundle are processed in order. So the requests that you've seen before, like create a patient or uh, uh, update a patient or whatever, those kind of requests can be in the bundle and they can be in a certain order. Um, yeah, you can imagine that if you want to do to first create a patient and then delete it, then the real the result would be that there is no patient anymore, and that's what you have to remember if you send a bundle. So the bundle is processed in the order that it's sent. Uh, you have two two uh, options: you do a batch batch bundle or you do a transaction bundle. Uh, obviously, the first is non-atomic, so the the requests are going to be processed, um, but if one fails, then you're just out of luck. You will get a message, obviously, for that uh, that request that failed. But still, it's not uh, processed, and the other are. So, if you do a transaction, then it's a, is it uh, guaranteed uh, atomic, and uh, so you will be sure that if something fails, that the whole bundle uh, fails. Um, there are some servers who don't really do this transaction atomically. So you have to really be careful about this because some servers are uh, pretending to do it 
atomically. So uh, if you are yeah, really doing that, then uh, be sure to, to know that. So I have a bundle here on the left side. It contains uh, entries, and an entry is really a request. So you can see from here, just gonna highlight this. Yep. So that first request is a post request on patient. And as you see in the full URL uh, up on top, it contains really a rather uh, strange ID. And that's actually a temporary ID. So if uh, a bundle is comprised of different requests, you can give a request a temporary ID, which means that if this patient is created, the ID that is resulting from that creation can be used in another request in the bundle. So for example, if you would want to create a patient and also create an observation for that patient, you can use this kind of temporary ID and use the same ID as a reference to the uh, uh, to the patient that was created before. So you can read about this also on the website, but you, it's good to know that, that it's possible. So you don't have to provide your ID always because otherwise you would, you would be left with only put uh, the put option in this case. Let's see if there's other interesting stuff here. No. I'm just gonna post it then. Uh, oh yeah, and you post it on the base of the server. So you post, post the transaction bundle on the base of the server. Then you get a transaction response and you get a response per request. So every request that was in your, uh, in your request bundle gets a, a separate response. Uh, in this case, you see the first one. Uh, it contains actually the same information that you would expect from, uh, from a, a uh, yeah, like a vanilla um, uh, post or a put action. That means that this, there is a location and there is a status and there is a last modified time and blah, blah, blah. The e tag will be, well, I will discuss later because it's uh, it's an interesting one as well. Uh, what you could have here is that you, uh, in, in the case of, uh, of the batch bundle, if you use a batch bundle, you could have a, um, uh, a combination of errors and uh, created resources. So you'll have to, an, an error is uh, transmitted in an operation outcome. That's the fire object for error, sort of. So you will have an operation outcome, then a patient, then an operation outcome. And that's in the same order as you, as the request that you sent. So you can always correlate them to each other. Resource validation, also interesting. There's, there's like different levels of validation. Uh, first one is serialization, serialization format, obviously. So you have to send it in via JSON in this case. Then you get the fire basics, which is every resource has a resource type. That's the most basic thing that you can have in uh, fire, actually. Then, of course, you have to say what kind of resource type that is. So patient is the, the, the next level of um, uh, validation. And then there's also another mechanism that I will not talk about, but it's uh, talked about in other talks. So if you're interested in that, please go to, to these talks. I will list them uh, later. And that's uh, checking against the fire profile. Fire profile is a, is a further constraint on a resource. So um, you can make these constraints yourself and you can use those constraints uh, to check against if you receive a resource or if you post a resource, depending on what you're doing. I'm just gonna Ooh. ah yeah. I'm just gonna send a resource that's not okay. This resource contains a problem, so I'm just gonna send it, and it it returns a bad request in this case. And also, it has like a description what happens. In this case, the instance count for observation status is zero, so there's no status in this resource, and it need apparently it needs a status. So I'm just gonna add a status just to be. Now I happen to know that it's, that this is final, I think. That's a valid value, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was right. Okay, so it may, it created this resource. But that you that's the way you can see that you you made a mistake. And I use it most of the time when I'm developing for stuff. You can use this information as well, obviously, because you're developing and you want to see uh what's happening. Obviously, in production, you're going to do something else if uh if this happens. 
So responses are uh, uh, the responses that, that are given are also um, part of the fire specification of the REST specification. One of the interesting things is location. Obviously, we've seen it before. It contains the ID. Obviously, also the content type. So uh, Fire has a few content types that are specific to Fire, and it will return that content type to you, even if you uh, uh, asked for a slightly different uh, resource type. For example, in this case, you get application Fire plus XML. Also, if you asked for application slash XML, so uh, it will uh, give you more information, actually. And you can also choose what kind of response you wish. So there's there's three different possibilities. Minimal means no content. You saw that with the delete um, uh, request earlier. Uh, then you have representation, means you get the resource back. So if you post a new resource, then you'll get the, the resulting resource, including uh, versioning information, blah, blah, back. And there's the operation outcome. That's the standard way for Fire to uh, communicate an error or also a success. So you will just see either a success or error message in that case. Uh, yeah, so simulation format I already talked about. Um, Fire has uh, supports mostly of most Fire servers, I have to say, uh, support more than one serialization format, usually XML and, uh, and JSON. Some Fire servers have different formats. For example, Fire Turtle is, is one of them. Um, so you can use that. And usually a Fire server will accept. Uh, if you use the accept header, I accept something uh, back in this format. That's what it means. Uh, then the Fire server will turn that into something that it, it is more familiar with. So uh, as I said, XML becomes Fire XML and stuff like that. Concurrency is also a really interesting subject, I think, because it's, um, for example, if you're making like a, a web application or something or a mobile application, um, you will want to know whether a resource has changed while you were doing work on it. So the user has loaded a patient, for example, has changed something in the patient, like the name or something, and you're going to post it back or you're going to put it back actually because you want to uh, do a, um, you want to change it. Um, these tags can be used to uh, to verify that the that the resource has not changed since you read it. So the last modified tag is a uh, is I think the most understandable one. So you can see when it was last modified, uh, and if you remember that date and you use it in the request headers down there. So if modified since, uh, then you can um, uh, do the updates. And the server will tell you, uh, okay, either uh, I accept your update because it has not changed, or I will not, and I give you back a 304 not modified, which means, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it, if modified since it's the other way around. So you read a resource, <laughs> and if it has mod it has been modified since timestamp, you you, um, you get it, so you get the new data, and otherwise you get a 304 not modified. So that's, that's in, in case of reading. The same goes for if non-match, but if non-match works on the e-tag, so the e-tag is sort of a version tag that you get back from the server. And if you use if non-match reading a resource, then it will only give you the, re the complete resource back if it has not changed. Uh, sorry, if it has changed. And if it has not changed, it will give you a non-modified, non which means you save data. And you also know for sure that it has not changed. The if match is, is uh, only used in an update. So uh, it uses the same e-tag. Uh, but it will it will communicate with you whether or not the resource has changed while you were working on it. So while you were working on it, uh, if the e-tag changed, then it will give you a precondition failed, uh, which means that you have to reload the resource and then uh, make the change again, post it again. Some servers also have uh, a mechanism for pessimistic concurrency, which is more like resource locking. So um, it will lock a resource while you are working on it and that, that way you are the owner of the resource for some time and then uh, you can release it. But that's not many servers have that actually. I'm just going to go a little bit faster because I can see that the time is already ticking. Um, exactly, yeah. So there's a, we fetch, I'm just going to talk about searching. Uh, fetching a resource by ID is, uh, is really easy. So you get uh, patient one, which is also, you know, if you have a reference, for example, you ask for patient one and you get the patient. 
But the same, you can do the same thing with a search and you can just uh, use the question mark and uh, use the search parameter ID and you you get exactly the same result, except from the fact that it's um, a different format. So I'm just going to ask for the, this patient in this way. I can ask for patient AF and I'm just going to do this. ID is AF. And I get the same patient, but I get it in a bundle. So the bundle is uh, is wrapped around the patient. So you can see that, it, I mean, it doesn't matter what you get, but um, yeah, if, if you do this uh, ID is AF, you really starting to do a search and a search produces a search uh, result set. So that's what you get. Now if, about the history, so you can get a patient itself, but you can also get the history. Well, that's interesting for like auditing or uh, if you want to pull uh, something, you get only the changes since the last uh, the last update, for example. That's one way of synchronizing fire servers, for example. Uh, and also if you want to like do something with undo in, the, in your uh, application. So there's two ways to do a search. You can do it with a get, uh, HTTP get, but you can also do it with a post. And I recommend doing it with a post because if you do a get, then your um, your filter parameters become, uh, they are in the URL and normally that's quite safe, but a lot of systems uh, lock this kind of information. So say they will lock the URL. And um, if you're specific enough, you can obviously uh, conclude from the log that uh, information about a certain patient was uh, requested at a certain date or time. So the most safe way to do this is using a post. And you use the same format, but you uh, you put the stuff in uh, the, the filters in the content and not in the URL. I'm just gonna do that quickly. So this, this is the, the body name Arita, and you get the, the bundle with results, just like you would get with the URL search. Um, so the search parameters, uh, some of them are in the fire standards uh, by default. So they, they are uh, for every resource, like ID, profile, and type. They are, uh, they, they are used for every resource. And then there's also a per resource set of uh, search parameters. If you look on the website, on the FIRE website, you can see per resource what the search parameters are. Um, and you can also create your own search parameters. A lot of servers allow that, to create your own search parameters. Um, then every parameter also has a, a certain uh, parameter type. And I've actually made a cheat sheet, so you can, uh, at home, you can print it out and uh, and use that. Uh, also, there's modifiers to uh, to search parameters. So in this case, for example, uh, uh, the family name is um, yeah requested exactly. So uh, I'm quite requesting for myself and Hova, but um, I want it to be exactly the same. So even with the uh, the caps uh, included, and for example, you can also say uh, missing. So if I want all the observations where the patient is missing, is a possible uh, filter that you could do. Um, same goes a little bit for uh, value prefixes. So you can, uh, if you have like an ordinal value, so something like a, a, a date or a number or uh, something that is uh, that can be ordered, then there's a lot of uh, value prefixes that can be used to do, for example, a greater than or a greater than, greater than or equal or lower than or whatever. So it's also included in the sheet. Um, yeah, this one is interesting too. If you want to, for example, uh, ask for a, for an observation, but you want the data of the patient as well, that's that's a very common use case, obviously, because you you ask for something and you want uh, the the associated data with it. You can use the include uh, parameter and also the ref include parameter. But I'm not going to explain that now because it's going to take too long. Um, let's see. So here I'm asking for a, uh, an observation and I'm using the search again uh, with the exact name uh, Franklin and to include the uh, patient with the observation. So as you can see, I get a bundle and the bundle contains the observation that I asked for. More than one actually, that's because people are using the server a lot. <laughs> uh, and um, also the patient that was uh, connected to the to the observation. 
Yeah, so I see I have only five minutes. Uh, I'm just gonna say about the capability statement. That's something that you can ask from every fire server and a capability statement tells you what a fire server can do. So you can uh, compare fire server so you can see if your uh, specific um, operation is there and stuff like that. I think I'm kind of through, yeah, I've chained. Yeah, let's have some time for questions. I think that's better than, yeah. Yeah, so you have five minutes to the question. Oh, sorry. Oh, and in that case, I'm going to go back. <laughs> yeah. So the capability statement, um, it's on metadata. So it's on the URL metadata. And um, so you can use it to either uh, compare service. So you, if you have different uh, different service, for example, for your work, my boss, uh, for example, asked me a few times to compare servers for a customer. Like, uh, can we use this one? Can we use that one? You can use the uh, the capability statement for that. You can just see what the differences in functionality are instead of reading all the uh, uh, the websites of the of the producers. Uh, and obviously, you can use it to uh, to do something in your user interface. You can either hide some functionality if it's not there, or you can uh, use uh, progressively better calls. Um, and the capability statement is built around. Uh, are really about resources, so it's a it's a it's a sum up of per resource the um, the capabilities and per per operation. Um, yeah, the last one. So the change search parameters. Uh, I've I included a little uh, uh, example here. Um, you can see that I can use patient dot family as a search parameter for observation. So in this case, I will get all the observations where the patient's family name is Entova and the patient birth date is my birth date. Uh, so I get my observations. Um, so that's the way you can use chaining in, uh, in search parameters. This is the search cheat sheet. I'm not gonna read it, but it's, uh, it's included in the presentation. So you can, uh, you can check it out later. Uh, obviously, you can contact me here uh, at the Dev Days because I wear a yellow shirt, so you can just find me around in the in all the hallways, um, and also via Hoover or uh, or whatever if you want to, uh, yeah, ask some more questions. And I think it's now time for some questions, if there are any. Yeah. Does anybody have any uh, questions for Abel? Absolutely. Um, yes, in your example, you created an observation in reference to a patient. Yeah. What if the patient cannot be found? Will the resource still be created? Yes. Uh, well, actually, it's more complicated than that. In in the most servers, it will get created, so it will be a uh, an orphanage uh, observation. But some servers uh, they have a mechanism that checks these kind of things, and they will not allow it. But sometimes it's a setting in the server. I think I know in Happy, for example, it's a setting. You can just uh, turn it on or off. This check. You mentioned uh, atomic and non-atomic. I didn't quite catch what that meant. Ah, atomic uh, means that uh, the operation that you're doing. So it's um it's a list of operations and it's considered one operation. So if if one of these uh, one of the operations in the list fails, the complete list fails. So you know for sure that uh, nothing is is done. To continue on that same question, if you have a bundle and the operational outcome of this atomic transaction renders to be the fifth step, the fifth resource is unable to be created or whatever, there's an error in there. Is that reflected also in the uh, bundle outcome there? So then you see the first four are successful yep. and the fifth one is failing, therefore the first yeah, even or are reverted then. Yeah, even though the complete is is reverted, then still you see the the results. Yeah. Anyone else? So uh, you mentioned that um, when you're deleting a resource, it only removes like the last version of yeah. a of a particular resource is there a way to kind of completely wipe 
all history some, rather than just yeah some servers have this capability uh, but it will be advertised separately because it's not part of the fire uh, rest api yeah anyone else for questions i see a oh, question sorry. here front row oh sorry yeah <laughs> Uh, you showed the when you requested an observation and you had the search parameters were about the patient that you included. Yeah. If you don't include the patient, can you have search par yeah, parameters? Yeah, but you get a, a zero result. So you yeah. have a, an empty result set. Yeah. I don't think there was one back there. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> I'm guessing, Noba, is, is there any? guidance in the spec about uh, like performance assurances for queries uh, related probably not or you just rely on the implementation no, there's uh, not uh, there's ways to improve performance though for example um, there is a parameter that's called I think total uh, normally if you do uh, like a big search uh, request you uh, you get the the total uh, back so for example 950 resources is the number that you get back if you disable that usually the server is twice as fast because uh, the total has also to be calculated uh, separate from the result set so that's one thing like I could say to you to improve stuff but there's no, really no, uh, no no spec about that how fast it should be and no way when you post a bundle to tell it to index uh, some way because you're going to be querying them. Yeah, some service, for example, they choose to index uh, afterwards. So they they accept the resource, uh, tell you that it's it's gone well, and then afterwards they they start a different a separate process to index. So that's faster, obviously. They, so the, the different servers uh, solve this problem in different ways, uh, but still, yeah. Yeah, just to follow up on the same same aspect. Um, is there a recommendation on how to to sort these these search parameters, especially for performance? Because if you have like um, something which you get all the results back and then you filter in the next step, I assume it's it's much slower than than if you filter for for the for the clearing a lot of um, resources out in the first yeah. Uh, part. Yeah, you're completely right, but I think it's up to the server to solve that problem. So uh, you as a, a user of the REST API don't, shouldn't have to bother about that. Uh, you should be free to do it and the server should decide whether or not it's it's easier or faster to, to use uh, one of your parameters before the other ones. Yeah. Hi. So going back to the example with the post bundle, let's say like the fourth, the fifth one fails. Mm -hmm. Would that re would the actual REST API return back a status two hundred or what status? What's the status of what, of what uh, it would return? I think I'm not sure about that actually. I, I I'm not sure if you get a two hundred. I don't think you get a two hundred if the the whole bundle fails. So if the whole um, operation fails. But yeah, I, the, like, I would say that you get a 200 if you have a batch bundle where you don't, it's not atomic. If it's yeah. atomic, you will get a fail. But if it's not atomic, then you probably get a 200 okay with one of the failing items in the in the result bundle. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. But maybe you can post it in the chat later. I can I can look it up. Yeah. Any other questions? I think one more. So you had a slide about uh, the history call or the history uh, URL part, which you were showing patient one history. So that's the history, all the changes of that patient. You had patient underscore history. That means what and how can it be used? And also you even adjust history on the endpoint. This one, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the first one, the get patient one history means I want, I want all the history of one patient. The second one means I want all the history of all the patients, which is a very uh, expensive operation, obviously. The other one uh, is even more expensive. It means I want all the history of the complete server. 
uh, obviously it's gonna take some time. Hey. Oh, yeah. No. And this underscore history can even combine with querying since last update. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, that's one way to to synchronize. Uh, yeah, good one. Great. I think we've got time for one or two more questions, and then I'll pick one just from the uh, online chat. Sure. And uh, um, so, if there's anything else from within the room, if not, um, is the search with modifier a default capability of any fire server? The search, the search with the uh, modifiers when you're able to modify using like the patient name and uh, yeah, well, those there, kinds of queries. The, yeah, I think I think I can answer that with yes, but uh, but having said that, uh, none of the functionality is standard for any fire server because fire servers can choose, pick and choose what functionality they they, they choose to implement. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the things that are implemented by everybody. So yeah. yeah. And then there was one more question that I think would just be good for the room. Can a bundle have a mix of operations, post, put, delete, and resources, patient observations? Yeah, yeah it can. Yeah, yeah. Well, with that, Abel, thank you so much for your time. And uh, thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, have a great rest guys. of your day. Yeah. Yeah. Give thank it up you. for Abel. <laughs> yeah.